We live by strength of body and strength of mind. We have to maintain that strength as best we can. Of course, with the body, there comes a point where no matter how well you treat it, it's going to have to start falling apart. But that doesn't mean you don't treat it well. You treat it well as best you can so you can get the most use out of it. Of course, the best use out of it is to help with strength of mind. We get the body to sit and meditate. We get it to walk in walking meditation, doing the chores around the monastery, everything that is skillful. And with the mind, again, you have to look after it. But there's a difference. You can keep the strength of the mind going all the way through the end of the body. But it requires that you learn how to look after it. That's why the Buddha taught the five strengths. So ordinarily, we feed, feed the mind on sensory contact, on our intentions, things like that. But the Buddha said it's like trying to feed off of flies that are constantly pestering sores or arrows that are constantly being shot at you. In other words, these things take a toll on the mind if they're not skillful, if they're not things that are really good for us. So we try to feed the mind with conviction, persistence, concentration, mindfulness, discernment, knowing when we have to be active, when we have to let the mind rest, and what the best ways of letting the mind rest are, like in concentration right now. The parts of the mind that keep wanting to think, what's next? What do we do next? What do we do after the meditation? What do we do this morning? What do we do this afternoon? You have to ignore those voices. Tell them, for the time being, you don't have to be responsible for any of those choices at all. Just give the mind some time to rest. Be with the breath. Bathe the body with the breath, which helps both body and mind. And then when the time comes to work, you have more strength. And then you do the work that you can in terms of trying to figure out what's going on in the mind, why you're causing yourself unnecessary suffering, what you can do to stop. And there will come a point, though, where things are getting blurry again, so you have to stop and rest again. And this is an important part of learning how to look after yourself, is knowing when to rest and when to work, and learning to read the signs inside yourself, and then knowing the best ways to soothe the mind as it's resting, and the best ways to energize the mind as it works. And this way you can maintain your strength of mind and it can grow, even as the strength of the body begins to fall away. The strength of the mind doesn't have to fall away, but it all depends on how you look after it. So learn the skills for looking after it and learn how to apply them and learn how to read the needs of the body, read the needs of the mind. So you can apply your knowledge in a way that's really helpful.